Hello boys and girls. I think it's been a whole month since I've done a video. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health and today I wanted to talk about Stefan Lindeberg. I believe that's how you say his name. Uh, Lindeberg is a Swedish researcher and very interestingly he went to the island of Catava which is in Papua New Guinea. It's in an area called the Trobriand Islands and this little isolated island is home to a few thousand natives and these few thousand natives have phenomenal health uh, they don't have any heart disease there was no evidence of any heart disease or heart attacks on the island not a single case of type 2 diabetes no acne no obesity uh, and so forth uh, rates of cancer very very low digestive disorders very very low and uh, for all practical purposes, uh, Western disease was completely absent in uh, Stefan Lindeberg's thorough investigation of the people of the island of Catava. Now, recently we've been, uh, you know, sort of tiptoeing into a higher carbohydrate, lower fat kind of idea. <clears throat> I know that JT and Riles, a couple of uh, 180 degree commenters and followers, They've reported having fantastic results, you know, better athletic performance, uh, better muscle gains, uh, greater leanness, uh, all those different things have come uh, with a combination of exercise on a high carbohydrate diet that just happens to be lower in fat, where basically, you know, carbohydrate is displacing more fat in the diet. Is there an advantage to that? I don't know. There may be, and uh, that's something that we're sort of tiptoeing in after uh, coming out of these, you know, sort of the low-carb dark ages. Um, so I wanted to, you know, I, th I think a lot of people have been uh, under the influence of low-carb for too long and generally believe that uh, carbohydrates spike insulin and they spike blood sugar and, uh, and when they do, they, uh, the cells start to shut down and become insulin resistant <clears throat> and then you become obese, your insulin levels rise and on and on and on, you start to develop metabolic syndrome, which is characterized by hypertension and high cholesterol levels and, and uh, abdominal obesity and rising blood sugars and type 2 diabetes. Um, most people, if they're uh, under the influence of low carb, believe that carbohydrates are really the culprit behind this phenomenon. Well, a good real world case in point and example uh, that refutes this is Stefan Lindeberg. He went to the island of Catava. And these people didn't have this phenomenal health because they were on a low-carb diet, uh, but because they were on a high-carb, low-fat diet. Uh, they're actually getting about 70% of their calories in the form of carbohydrate. Um, they're getting about 20% in the form of fat. Uh, most of it's saturated fat, and they have a very high ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. All of those things are probably important factors and they consume about 10% of their calories as protein, which is lower than you see in most Western nations, which potentially could also be another key to their success. Now, I don't believe that there's any one magic macronutrient ratio, but when you do a thorough investigation and examination of the diets of traditional peoples across the world, and pe peoples that you know, were well documented as having a complete absence of most quote-unquote Western disease, you're looking at you know, fat intakes of anywhere from 5% of the diet all the way up to 80% of the diet. So you know, it's hard to say that there's one magic ratio. And I believe that you know, some people will be do, they, they may do well eating you know, lower carbohydrate for a while, and then higher carbohydrate, and then doing some alternating there. Some people might do better with a very, very high carbohydrate diet all the time. I do believe that some people might do better with a high fat diet long term um, and certainly can benefit from doing it short term. You know, I, I definitely believe that a vegan diet uh, and negative complications that people get from prolonged vegan dieting can certainly be overcome by eating a ton of animal fat and meat and really countering those imbalances that they might have run into on that diet. But just in general, looking at uh, Stefan Lindeberg's analysis of the Catavans, and people elsewhere, uh, other great 20th century authors include Dennis Burkett, Hugh Trowell, T.L. Cleave. T.L. Cleave in particular, I happen to believe is you know, probably the most important author of the 20th century. You know, up there with the likes of Weston A. Price 
and some others who really got to see that transition from from you know quality diet to uh, the introduction of refined foods like white sugar, white flour, and all those vegetable oils that uh, you know masquerade around as being so healthy these days. Anyway, uh, just to reassure you that uh, you're not going to become type 2 diabetic from eating carbohydrates per se, the Catavans have an average blood sugar between 60 and 70 milligrams per deciliter. This is way, way lower than anything that you're going to see uh, in any Western country or any modern country on the face of the earth. Uh, zero cases of type 2 diabetes. I think there's some very important lessons to learn, not only for preventing type 2 diabetes, but also uh, overcoming and reversing it. Um, Dennis Burkett, Hugh Trowell, these guys experience the same type of phenomenon. Type 2 diabetes is not an issue on a very high carbohydrate, low fat diet, assuming that those carbohydrate sources are of very, very high quality. Uh, they're not refined and uh, they still have their fiber and all their phytonutrients, uh, all, all of that intact. So, uh, anyway, uh, we're going to explore this high carbohydrate, lower fat diet and see uh, what it can do for us. I know a lot of people have negative experiences with it, but I believe that uh, a lot of those negative experiences came from two flaws. Uh, one flaw was that they used mostly white sugar and white flour, and they used low fat as an excuse to eat a lot of white floury, white sugary products, uh, which is always a risky endeavor. Um, and then a lot of people also uh, didn't eat. They tried to cut calories and eat a low-fat diet simultaneously, which is a great way to dissolve lean body mass and become ravenously hungry and have huge negative metabolic impacts. So I, I do believe those are the two, two most common mistakes. I do believe those are the mistakes that I made in the past uh, whenever I was trying to eat a pretty much you know, predominantly carbohydrate-based diet. You know, I really just didn't eat enough, and uh, you know, a lot of times in my youth, you know, my negative carbohydrate ex experiences can all be chalked up to uh, low quality carbohydrates, and also, you know, probably too much fat, uh, particularly polyunsaturated fat in the diet, which really, really hinders our ability to metabolize carbohydrates properly, in my experience. Um, so anyway, that's it for today. Um, good intro to Staff and Lindeberg or Stefan Lindeberg and his book, Food and Western Disease, and his work with the Catavans. Many lessons to be learned there. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health, and I'll talk to you soon.